We are done, thanks to the expertise of these two guys at Westbrook Supply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, step aside, do the reveal. This is what we got. So we got navigation lights and the, the red lights underneath the seat that's hooked up to A. I'll turn those off. I got my battery box there with the active target all hooked up to this Lowrance HDS7. And what am I going to do? I'm going to pull this mount out. I think I have some more tweaking to do because this isn't totally level. Uh, I think this this flat surface is angled, but we'll uh, we'll mess with that later. So I got my forward-facing sonar right here, right next to the seat. Good position, and we will go ahead and turn all that off with B. Okay. Um, we have. Where's USB? this one? Yeah, USB there. That is C. That's C. Yep. Is it C and D or is it just C? C and D. Okay. C and D, which D is is back here. We'll just yep. click that one. D. Mm -hmm. And C. And yeah. This is the last one. That one's going to stay on constant. Until you unplug that. So unplug this. Yep, that's the main power. This is the this is the power to the depth finder. And man, this is always complicated. Like to it me, is. and to have there's a lot of cables. It is a with. lot of cables. Yeah. we've cleaned them up, and really having that cleaned up is what I think is going to allow me to use this technology more having clean wiring. I think it's a barrier when you have so many different things to hook up Yeah. and it takes you an extra 20 minutes at the ramp and you yeah. got there, you're excited and you're just like, I want to fish now. Uh, this takes a lot, but this has taken a lot less. Yeah. Thank you yeah. to, uh, to good wiring. So streamline. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys. Yeah. It's awesome. You look shocked. <laughs> I'm always in a state of shock and confusion. Yeah, we just, so we're installing the through it's, hole it's, for the trace. It's, it's the Scott Butcher face. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to point at someone. You need to just pull together and point at each other. There it is. <laughs> is that it? Love Scott. Love Scott. <laughs> All right, we're doing a through hole. Let me grab this so that we're looking at the through hole wiring kit from Yak Attack. All right, so we're, we're going to put the uh, through hole right here. We'll let the cord come out from here. So what I like to do is mark it, find the center. Yeah. People ask me, how do you eyeball it? I don't know. I just pretend like I know how to eyeball it. Let's start by just showing the, the parts of the kit and doing sure. like an overview of Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got all this other stuff here. But. So this is... So we got, you know, the got to figure out which wire loom. To me, I feel like D and C are always the most common for the cord, and I like to go with, yep. Yeah. So transducer wire. This is going to come up through the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to jam my transducer where it was. And you're matching one of those. Yep. To the diameter of this. Yep, and that would be. And then you just snip it and. Slide I would, yeah. It in. You cut it in at an angle, and then you slide it in, and then when you have the wire come down, you pretty much this will close right on into that and kind of sit flush. And then a solid one on this side. Yep, right. unless you got another cord coming out, but other than that, it'll be one solid and one size D. Okay, go for it. All right, so I'm going to poke there. So now we just need to drill it. All right, so you're not using the hole saw. I've always done this with a one-inch hole saw. Really? That you have, yeah. Yeah, I I, I do this because I, I don't know. I it gives me I guess more. Call it a step down bit. Yeah, step down bit. Do you know which one which ring you're going for? Up to one inch. Okay. And you can see that. I play. You're eyeballing. It. Yeah, I'm eyeballing right now. If 
but that's definitely not the right size. Almost there. That's the reamer. Kind of cutting that clean. Nice. To test fit it to make sure that it drops right in there. Nice little. And you fun. just want the center part to. To, to seat, drop yep. seat down in the hole? Yeah, to drop that so now it's fully sealed. Okay. To have that. So All right. So what I'm gonna do now, center it. That's your center punch. Center punch. It gives the drill bit a little divot to, to guide to settle down on. You just know from experience that that's the right size and it's C or D? It is D. Okay. So what that does, it allows you to cover that. Okay. So it keeps it really sealed. Yep. So. All right. But yeah. For now, I think the other one will be solid. Okay. But that would go there. All right. And that would go there. So I need to crawl under and feed this up through the bottom. Yep. So let me take that all down. Okay. Through there. Through there. Yep. And then I only think it's, I don't think that I need much. it much longer than that, but we can take the, um, the head unit, which I have here, which we're going to power up a little bit later. <laughs> With the whole yeah, give us FPV, some like this is all prep work for for all this stuff that we're getting to here in a minute. But oh, that nice. yeah, that beautiful aggregation of electronic pieces. Okay, so that's set up there, and I forgot to put it through the. No. Well, yeah. Yeah, I gotta. <laughs> like it's. We have to do this. Yep. And then we get the distance right. Okay. Slide that up. This goes. Sit up there. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. That goes on there. Mm -hmm. Solid one goes there. This comes down and joins them together. We kind of scoot that down. Yeah. <clears throat> then I'm going to take the camera and you're going to put the screws in. Make sure that I can get to my guided hole. Each one of these kits come with two. Yeah, you can do two of these, and then you get four screws. Each one takes two screws. And, uh, and we're really good at bearing everything as we go. This is. <laughs> I pulled away for, I don't know, has it been 10, 10 15 minutes? Yeah, because I had to take a call from Germany, but um, you finished it up. You know? I did. And the first thing I do is just come grab it. And it's like, it's not, well, the lock and load's moving, but like this is, yeah. you know, this is in there. So yeah, I decided we're, we we put two screws in there, but behind those we ran some extra um, Yak Attack through holes. Just as to, a spacer? Yeah, so it gives you that little extra cushion and it's got a little bit of space to there. Um, now I didn't do it just a tube, I did it to two more walls. To, oh, wow. So we got the sides? Yeah, you got the sides. You can see a little bit of spacers on the inside I as think well. I can see it. You can see a little bit on there. Sort of in there? Yeah. Kinda. Yeah, there you go. One there. Yeah. One there. Yeah. And then there's, like I said, two on the other side. So, okay. I mean, I can lift your whole boat up with just yeah. <laughs> that bracket. So, that is solid. Yeah. 
Awesome. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. And I'm going to get that transducer up there, coil all my wire in there, and uh, and we'll, we're going to be moving on finally to doing this stuff. Okay, this is the part we've been building up for putting the transducer in and making this funky pod for the transducer. And I just spent, I don't know how long, trying to get the active target on that. There's a 54 amp hour total lithium in there to power everything, keep the charger in there with it, and the active target box on there, and I did some, you know, some through-haul wiring kits. If you're curious about making that box, the waterproof box, that's a whole other video. Yeah. It's, it's, it's on my tackle, not tackle crafting, uh, kayak rigging playlist. Yeah. yeah. Which this is all going to be in. It's there. <laughs> But we're not covering that because we got so much else to cover. Yes. So we've been thinking about USB ports and we got navigation lights and how we're power where the plug is with the through haul wiring kit to put to the you know, the Lorance, like the the monitor itself, the, the head unit and some other considerations. Uh, Let's do an overview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. do we want to do this just walking it or do we do we look at my chicken scratch diagram well we, we could we could start there just uh you know uh if, if you want to pause and uh uh try to decipher that uh there it is that's that's the game plan and and this is an, an overlay on a foot control steering kit with a stick steer for um drew's boat over there we'll do that later <laughs> that's a little preview for the next video i there. just needed a you know a blank boat i just put you know you put that's going to be on a a Number one, number one. So yeah, we planned it out. We yeah. can put that down. It's gonna okay. be be more meaningful for you to walk through. Yeah, actual hardware. So starting from the front, uh, the RVR has got this nice little uh, molded in area here, which is gonna be ideal for some uh, navigational lights. So green. Uh, yeah, and green, then red. red. Yeah. Yep. And these are some the Osmium uh, waterproof LEDs, uh, so they're going to be perfect there. Uh, and that's all, everything ultimately is going to come through this FPV power distribution hub here. Uh, so this is nice, it's all waterproof connectors, individually fused for each one of your accessories that you connect to it. So that's what that uh, diagram was, was just kind of laying out how we're going to do all that. So this box is going to live inside the hole here. We're going to utilize this hatch cover. Uh, to put a panel mount connector in there. So uh, Jeff's battery box will live here, it'll connect in, and it'll power up everything through this distribution hub. So coming back from there, we're gonna power a fish finder uh, here. And then coming back, uh, we're gonna have some USB uh, located near the seat. Uh, we're thinking about utilizing this panel here because it'll save us from having to drill a big hole in the boat. We'll do it in this panel, which if we ever decide to put it back to stock, will be an easier task. Just getting that uh, panel from yeah. Bonafide. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, interior cockpit lighting. Uh, we're gonna use, utilize some uh, button LEDs <coughs> to have some red light in here, which will be good. It'll. It... So what's critical of that is that you, you, you never have it where it's gonna be coming at your eyeballs. Because they're blind. They are very bright, yeah. So anytime you can kind of tuck them under a seat or under a ledge. So uh, we're going to put it in here somewhere, kind of bathing this whole area in red light. Red because it's less buggy. The, the uh, less buggy, uh, better for night vision. Yep. Uh, a lot of, you know, if you look at the instrument cluster on your car or an airplane or whatever, you know, they're typically either a, a green or a red and uh, that's I don't know, eyeball science. I don't yep. know. <laughs> so, eyeball uh, science. <laughs> uh, so moving back from there. Uh, so we got lighting take, taken care of. So in order to power up uh, Jeff's GoPros, uh, we're gonna be doing, again, another waterproof uh, USB port back here. Uh, so we were talking about, we were debating back and forth between, again, utilizing this panel as, as the mounting location or, you know, putting it on a vertical surface. Uh, typically, I shoot for a vertical surface just for water intrusion, uh, it, you know, 
sitting like that if it rains or whatever it, there's chance that you know this may catch water we're on a, a vertical surface uh, you're, you're a little bit less likely to do that so uh, you know pros and cons you know you make your choice you know do you want to drill a hole in the boat or do you want to be a little more you know water secure so cool um, yeah ready set go ready set go let's start drilling holes just trying to figure out the best flat spots to utilize here How's that? How's that look to you? Looks like that bit is hungry. Let it eat. We screw that down, that'll be nice and snug in there.
So Fletch is trying to make sense of what used to be a big balled up, all my wires attached to this, right? Yeah. But we're going to clean it up somehow? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to make this a little more better, make okay. it easy for you. Uh, we're probably, I think what we're shooting for is maybe doing another one of these panel ports. Uh, on the side wall over here, okay. so you can just plug your fish finder up very easily. Okay. Uh, it'll be nice and clean. You know, if you decide not to use it, you know, no wires dangling, just a nice little clean, uh, clean port there. So. Cool. What is this thing called? Uh, wire loom. Wire loom. Wire loom. All right. So we just went back and forth with this longer. This is the Ethernet cable that eventually goes into there and it's going to be sitting here so it's cleaner than the, than the ball of electrical this tape way. i had around there so this is also called wire also wire, loom. wire loom is just a smaller piece yeah so So that's B. All right, I was just testing the connections before we started drilling holes and mounting. So, okay, uh, so, so yeah, yeah, that was B. So that works, just doing what it's supposed to do. So if I click this, I lose power. Yeah, you're done, you turn it off. Yeah. Okay. That's A. A, A, A is yeah. the nav lights and, and these bows. red button lights. Ready, turn off. Okay, the other one. This is D or C? I don't know. C? Well, one C. Yeah, this is gonna be D. It's D? Hit, hit that D off. D off. Told you. Okay. And then this should be C. C off. Cool. <laughs> so it's kind of like, kind of like alphabets, right? A, B, C, D. Kind of like we know so what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So the FPV power, we still have two of them open, one and two, but they'll they'll be. If I hook something to that, what does it say? Uh, one is actually oh. going to be connected to your USB in the on the front. Hatch. Okay, always on when connected. Always on, and then two is still open. Uh, oh. yeah. So time to clean her up. Yeah, we just uh, button it up and we'll be ready to go. Cool. Yeah. This is awesome. This is just, this is going to be so easy. The big thing about this is that, you know, I, I think that there are times where I don't bring the full, you know, active target depth finder. Like, I just, I look at it and I think, ah, do I really want it? No. Yeah. Because there's so many different connections. This cuts down how many connections, you know, we got to work with. Oh, a ton of them. Six, uh, so. and, and beyond that, if you decide that you, you don't want to run your fish finder at all, 
uh, everything's going to be nice and clean. There'll be no wires cluttering anything up. It'll, it'll look very clean and stock with the ports. Uh, so, you know, if you have it, it's good. If you don't, uh, you know, it's, it's even cleaner. Cool. So, Thank yeah. you, guys. No problem. Well, excellent work. <laughs> hey. Look at that. B. B. I did hit P. Oh, because you're going to plug it here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hit that B. Try again. There it is. B. Mm -hmm. C. C. And D.